Hi, and welcome back to our tutorial series on building Java web apps. In the last tutorial, we built a backend for our CRM using Spring Boot. In this tutorial, we're going to take that data that we have in the backend, the contacts, and we're going to put them into a data grid in the UI. So I am inside of the main view class here. And main view is mapped to the empty route, so it will show up on localhost 8080 once we deploy this. And what I want to do now is define a new data grid and hook this view up to the backend so that we can get the context from our database into the view. So uh, first thing that I'm going to do is create a new grid object. That's a data grid in Vaadin. And this will be a grid that deals with contacts. We'll call it grid and initialize it to a new grid and pass in contact.class. By passing in contact.class here, Vaadin knows what type of object to expect, and it will automatically configure some of the columns for us. Now, next up, we're going to define a class name for main view. The class name is a CSS class name that we can use for CSS styling later on. I usually find it to be a good idea to put these in early on, just so it makes it easier later when I come back and want to do some styling. So we're listing contacts here. So we're going to add a class name of list view. Then we're going to call set size full, which will make main view the same size as the full browser window. And finally, we're going to call add and pass in the grid. So let's go ahead and run the application. And once the server starts up, you should be able to see an empty data grid here with the columns that correspond to the properties that we have in our contact object. Again, if you followed our earlier tutorial on how to set up live reload, go ahead and turn on live reload in your browser. That way, all the changes we make will show up automatically without you having to refresh that browser. Now, the next thing we want to do is, well, besides passing in all the actual contacts here, we want to configure which of the columns uh, we want to show. So let's begin by passing in all the contacts. So we need to hook up this main view to our backend. As you remember from the last video, we have a contact service class that provides us with all the API methods we need for accessing the backend. So we'll take this in as a parameter to main view and Spring will take care of auto wiring it in for us. I'm going to save this into a field so that I have access to it uh, throughout the entire main view. And then I'm going to create a new method called configure grid like this. So I usually like to call the method as if it existed, and then use the ID to actually generate the method. That way I can save a little bit of typing. So the couple of things we want to configure in the grid, first of all, the same as we did for main view, I'm going to add a class name to the grid for later. So I'm going to call grid dot add class name, I'm going to call this the contact grid. Okay, and then I'm going to call grid dot set size full to make that full size. And then I'm going to configure which columns to show and in which order. So by calling set columns, we can define in which order and which columns we want to show. Now you can see that they're essentially just showing up here in more or less alphabetical order, not in necessarily in the order that we'd like to see them. Instead, I'm going to uh, configure this to be first name, last name, email, status, and company. Okay, and then the final thing that we need to do is call the contact service to actually update the grid. We're going to end up needing to do this from a couple of different places. So I'm going to turn that into a separate method as well. So let's call this update list. And again, use the ID to generate this. And what the implementation will look like is a call to grid dot set items. So set items takes in a collection or a list, and we can get that collection by calling contact service dot find all. Okay, so build the application and wait for the compilation to complete. And you should be able to see all the contacts showing up here in your in your browser. Now, there are a couple of things that we still need to improve here. So 
probably the most obvious one is that company is not showing the name of the company right now. It's showing the fully qualified class name of the company object, which is not necessarily very useful to us. So let's take a look at how we can configure a custom column instead of that. The first thing we need to do is remove the default column, the one that Vaadin set up by itself. So let's call remove column by key. And then we're going to remove company. Going to remove it from set columns here. And instead, I'm going to call grid.add column. And add column takes in a lambda. So it'll give us the contact for that row. And then we need to return a string. So what we need to do is get the company from that contact, check if it's null or not, and then return an appropriate string. So we'll get that from the contact, get company, and then we'll call return, and then check if the company is equal to null. If it is, then let's just return a dash. If it's not, then let's turn company.name. And the final thing to configure for the column is the header. So call set header here, just continue on the add column call here, and we'll give it a header of company like so. All right, let's go ahead and build this. And now you can see that we actually see the company names here instead of the fully qualified uh, class names. The final thing that I want to do in this video is allocate the space between the columns a little bit better. So right now, by default, Vaadin gives each column the same amount of space, which isn't ideal in our case. So like first name and last name have a lot of, a lot of empty space, whereas email and company get clipped off altogether. So let's let's configure that. The easiest way to do that is to get a hold of the grid, then get the columns, and then loop through each of those columns. So for each of them, what we want to do is call uh, set auto width and pass in true. So we turn on auto width for that column. Again, build. And once you go back to the browser now, you can see that the columns are much more appropriately spaced. And we can read the entire email, we can see the entire company name. And this is overall just much easier to read. That's it for this tutorial. Be sure to join us for the next tutorial to see how we can add filtering to this data grid in the next step of our Java web app tutorial. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications so that you don't miss any of the tutorials that we have coming out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.